Hello and welcome to the final day of the 2016 Longines FEI World Cup Jumping Final here in Gothenburg. This 38th running of the most prestigious indoor global series has already produced one of the most exhilarating weekends of equestrian sport seen in recent years. At the end of the first final competition on Friday, the French riders had a grip on the leaderboard, with rankings leading lady rider Penelope Leprevo taking first place, followed by her compatriot and world number one, Simon de Lestre. After a dramatic second competition on Saturday, which was won by the 2011 victorious pairing of Christian Alman and Tali Betzed, the top of the leaderboard was all change with three more previous champions heading the field. On zero penalties is last year's Las Vegas winner, Steve Gerdat. Right on his heels with two penalties is three times final winner, Mark Cerning. And in joint third place with three penalties is the 2014 victorious combination of Daniel Dusser riding Cornet de Moore. The tension is rising here in the Scandinavium in anticipation of a thrilling climax to the Longin FEI World Cup jumping final. The battle of the champions is about to begin. We're here at the edge of the stadium and as you can see, the seats, the 11,000 capacity stadium will be absolutely packed in a few moments time. It's just about seven minutes before the first horse comes in. I'm Phil Gazala and I'm joined by Jess Curtin, who's sitting next to me. Jess, you can feel the tension in the air here, can't you? Yeah, hi Phil, hi everybody at home. Uh, it's really a special atmosphere. If we could only bring this through the screen to you at home, the arena is completely full with all these Swedish fans and all those people who have come to see the World Cup final here this weekend. Leading it, Jess, Olympic champion, last year's winner, Steve Gerdat for Switzerland. Uh, you know, look, look at the quality. Of that. That's the first, that, you know, the top six or seven riders there. Yeah, absolutely, Phil. When we look at the scoreboard up until Marco Kutcher there in ninth place, these riders actually all have a grip on that trophy. Christian Alman, fantastic yesterday. He's, he's just behind. He just has to go in there and jump two clear rounds today and see what the others do. He climbed 15 places after, after day one because he had a bit of a disappointing start, Christian Alman, former yeah, winner. I mean, uh, we all saw that with Colorit, he had two fences down. He, he wanted to save Talibay, of course, the great Talibay. And unfortunately, it really, it really just went wrong. Um, Colorit came out and jumped super yesterday and uh, it was just a disappointing day and you that's that's the sport but uh, Talo Bay was really a worthy winner on Saturday night here well there is the current leader Steve Godat for Switzerland Jess what's going through Steve well that's Marcus as well the top two of course Marcus former winner of three finals as I mentioned earlier could he be the first man to win four FEI World Cup jumping finals well if not, none of the others hinder him in doing it yeah he could be and I, th I think it's a very, it's a calm atmosphere here today. Certainly when the riders were warming up their horses and working a little bit this morning in the practice arena, everybody's very concentrated, everybody's very focused. And of course, the nerves do play a huge role in this final here. And each rider has learned uh, how to deal with his nerves best. Obviously you have to t make their nerves a little bit your friends. Uh, some of these riders had, have had mental training over the years, some not. But these people do know how to manage themselves. They know how to manage their horses. And of course, there is this element of just keeping your nerv nervosity under control. Rich fellas and the chestnut flex for just going out of the picture. There's Max and Chardonnay. Max, yeah. Max Kuhn and Chardonnay, they'll be fourth into the arena. Lovely pictures in the practice. And you can just see everybody gently moving around. A lot of riders are already up on their horses, wanting to give them plenty of time doing a lot of walk as you can see where they've got two strong rounds ahead of them today and uh, they just want to gently quietly warm the horses up and deal with their own feelings going into this competition a very informed crowd here in Gothenburg as is always the case the 14th time that we've had the Longin FEI World Cup final in Gothenburg Judy, Judy Al 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 yeah, there. Christian Alman's father sitting beside her George Alman that's the new fence, that picture of the Gothenburg Bridge, which is now the wall. You actually got a good shot of it there at the bottom of the screen. Yeah, difficult, difficult fence for the horses to jump. It's a, a new technology um, in the show jumping sport um, that the pictures will be on the jumps. That's Dennis Lynch, his girlfriend, Chris Chug, 
I think Peter Lutz there. Dennis Lynch in the, in the, in the white polo cap there. Of course, the, the only man who's yet to knock a fence down, but that just hasn't been quick enough. That's correct, that's correct. When you look at the statistics over the day, Dennis has jumped three clear rounds as the only person, but because of the point system and the fact that he was slow the first day, okay, he was second on Saturday, but because of being slow, as he has a slow horse, he, uh, he is a little bit down the rankings. Michael Kazmazak for polo will get us underway of the 26 riders, representing 12 nations coming forward for this final great day. In fact, two Polish riders who've made the last 26. Chris Chug with his girlfriend's eight-year-old Christine. What a performance they've had over the last few days. I think we can really see with the strength now, the two Polish lads in there. Uh, it is, it's working, the concept of the FE Langevin uh, World Cup Tour. We are bringing the sport uh, through the world, and now you see it was. It would have been a few years ago unusual to have a Polish competing at the competition. Now we have two in the final. We have Chris, Ch Chris Chug, and, and when you see he has been able in his league to produce this wonderful horse to this, to this level. So it's really showing that the sport is expanding throughout the world. And world number one, Simon de Lestre, in sixth place at the moment on five penalties. Um, he's got a shout, Penal de Preveau on the same for France. Well, we'll come more obviously about the leaderboard, but I think that that was, uh, there he is. I was just about to introduce Santiago Varela there, but it looks Koenix, the course designers here, and what a fabulous job. Harry Smolder's just there in the bottom of the screens, one of the men in contention this afternoon here in Gothenburg. Absolutely, Phil. When you look at the leaderboard, it is wide open going into the final. I think that uh, Santi's done a fantastic job here. He has not yet taken the last out of the riders and horses. Take us um, around the course, yes. Well, let's have a look. This is, this is a big one today. And uh, number one is a gold one just jumping towards the in gate, then straight away into a meaty oxer. That is already one meter 50 wide, that oxer. Five strides up to this wall with a photograph on the front of it. That could be a little off putting for some. Coming round the corner, long turn round to this number four. It's a very light, very square oxer. It's one meter 52 tall. Then a nice seven strides down to this silver oxer. Again, get, getting the width on in that oxer. And then round two, the triple combination. Very fairly built as usual. One meter 60, that vertical going in. The oxer in the middle, one meter 52, 160. Two strides on 11 meters coming out, and it's 152, 150. Five and a half strides to this wavy plank, and it comes really sharp. Some will do six strides there, some will do five. This oxer is a little more lenient, the FEI oxer, but they have a bending six strides into a difficult combination. Oxer coming in, and eight meters to the vertical, and both have got water underneath, and it's exactly four and a half strides to that Ariat vertical. Most people we will see there jumping four. Coming home, stretching over this blue triple bar, it's 15 meters. 40 to that vertigo and then it's 1850 to the oxer so Santiago is really expecting the horses to get a little long at the end stretch to that vertigo and a really short four strides to that last longing oxer which is very very square today so really this is a demanding course that he's built today it's the first course of two demanding courses that they're going to jump today and I have to say Phil today he means business all we've heard all weekend in the first two days of jumping we've got day off yesterday of course for the horses but all we've heard is compliments to the course designer to Santi Santiago because he's done a fantastic job yeah the man has he is passionate it's absolutely wonderful to follow this man I follow him really closely now all weekend and the effort that he puts into thinking why he's building each jump why he's building each distance how tall how wide which cup should he use he's got some quite shallow cups in there today I mean you touch a pole today it's going to be on the floor the man has put so much effort into it and what he has also done is he's really protected the horses he has not yet had uh, a line in there or a jump in there would have tested their horses to their very limit and that's very fair uh, showing great horsemanship time allowed for the first of the two rounds 75 seconds 26 competitors 12 nations and we're here on the final day of the 2016 Longin FEI World Cup final and to get us Underway, the first of two representatives from Poland, Michael Kazmazak and Kepasa. 22 penalties. He starts with a number of captions before each rider will show you that their standings of 22 penalties brought forward from the first two rounds, Friday and Saturday. Michael Kazmazak, Kepasa 5, to get us underway here in Gothenburg.
Nice to see that Michael has so many supporters with him there, the horse owners and his family, all here to cheer him on. It's a great moment for him, without the experience that some of the others have to be here in the final. And Santi has told us, of course, the time allowed is 75 seconds. That's a good shot of that wavy fence there, Jess. Yeah, he's not so friendly, that one. And he's put it, he's put it on the angles, you know, it's a, it's a rider's jump in the end. Tension building here in the Scandinavian. I must say the ground has been very good here all weekend. It's stayed elastic and uh, you really see the horses jumping day for day better on the ground. That's a little bit the problem with this, this photograph picture on, on the, the, the wall. It's quite difficult for the horse to judge exactly w what it is that they're dealing with. One of the great things about modern technology for the viewers, that black little box in the bottom right hand of the corner, that's the accumulation of the points. He started on 22, he's had a fence down, that's gone to 26, and that will run throughout the program. Riding really well here, Michael. Of course, as the first person in the ring, you have your plan. But sometimes when you walk the course, it just rides ever so slightly different to what you walked. Like there, come on. Uh, he just came up the inside and the horse stuttered, looking slightly into the oxer. And then he really stumbled coming out and it just wasn't possible for him to get his balance. Did well to keep going. Two down, one time penalty, finishes on a total score of 31 for Michael Kazbazak and Kepasa. 31 penalties in total for the first man in, in Gothenburg this afternoon. I think Michael gave, gave the horse a good ride. Um, one or two small things. Um, you can just see here Kepasa just going slightly to the right and not really respecting the wall. He couldn't really judge it with that picture on. And there you see him stumble. Mm. And basically that was a very brave horse and a very balanced rider to keep going there. This man's a good rider. Yes, in fairness to Michael, actually he did just stumble there going after the, in the, yeah. in the middle of the double. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Now for Hungary. Marianne Hugiez and Chaco Boy, and as the name suggests by Chaco Blue, won the Central European League the Southern Sub League to get here. You've been talking to Marianne, Jess. Yeah, Marianne is a girl. She's really, uh, she's really progressed and she's uh, in a very good place in her sport at this moment, producing her horses. And like I said the other day, she put a lot of effort into this horse over the years to really have him built up to this level and comfortable at this level. And she's a, a great team of people who support her with this horse. And uh, she just asked me before just to go through the course because she hasn't jumped this kind of level um, before. And although she knows <laughs> although she knows what she's doing, she just wants to have the reassurance of speaking to someone who's done it before. And uh, I really had the feeling that she was in a good place before going into this competition. I don't think she's having any nerves. <sighs> and just two small errors there. Both times coming just a little bit close. But this is, this is it in the final. I mean, you can really see that the first half of the course, Marianne and, and Chaco really fighting to jump the jumps and um, really, you know, really giving everything. And you could hear her through the triple combination. And then afterwards, you just notice that the fight, the fight has just gone out a little bit. And, and that's what happens on day three of championships. <laughs> Unfortunate that she had that on the, on the last line. But this is what day three is all about. Marianne Hugues and Chaco Boy, they finish on a total of 38 penalties for Hungary. You can just see her coming through the corner and Chaco Boy just, just hanging a little bit and she gets that tiny little bit close. And here he hangs right out to the left. And then, you know, she was expecting that to be a little bit short and then uh, just couldn't get her distance.
And now the first of three riders from the USA left in the competition. They started with six. Otto Becker. Everybody standing down in front of the screen there. Otto Becker just giving a few tips to the German rookie. Starting with 18 penalties for the United States of America, Rich Fellers and the 20 year old Flexible. Former winners of this championship back in 2012. Well, how many times have we already sat in front of the screen watching this combination saying this is going to get too big for them now this is they're going to be out of the limit and they've proved everybody wrong over and over again i mean he was second in 2008 way back then what a wonderful horse what a wonderful partnership this has been yeah absolutely it's the part it's always the partnership at this level at every level of partnership but really uh, to see a horse like this this man knows exactly how to ride this horse through this course he knows how much support he needs and we were talking over the last few days, Jess, about the way horses are looked after so well these days. You know, we've got lots of, we've got, we've had several late teens and of course flexible at 20. They're all still jumping out of their skin, aren't they? Yeah, I mean, it's a management reserve. That was a little little bit of uh, misjudgment there, Von, Von Chris. He just went straight over the bend in the middle. And that's something that riders really try to avoid doing. And he paid the penalty for it. But flexible jumping a great round here. But it, like you said, I mean, really these days, ev there's so much effort put into it, ground, uh, health, uh, the general looking after, it's not really unusual that horses are jumping later. What a round. The way he took the last there uh, was absolutely <laughs> incredible. The trust just is, yeah, the trust between the pair of them is amazing. I mean, I think... Sorry, just for to add for Rich Fellows and Flexible, they complete the first round here this afternoon on a penalty score of 22. Rich Fellas and Flexible, 22 penalties. I think this round is a good marker for us, Phil, because this is a combination who've done it before. This is a combination who can jump at this level. And let's be fair, apart from this small mistake where he just rides straight over the middle. I mean, um, yeah, her face expression says it all. Um, you can just see straight over the middle. I mean, this is anybody would tell you, please try to jump uh, through one of the down pieces well, and the not the up. Bit. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's logical. But there you go. These things happen. But he did jump the rest of the course in a good rhythm and reasonably easy. So I think that was a good marker. I wonder what's going to happen. Are we going to end up getting a few clear rounds here? Well, time will tell Max Kuna for Austria with Chardonnay brought forward 17 penalties. And in saying that, the penalties really from his first day with electric touch, where the mare simply simply was jumping just a little bit, a little bit a level above what she's ready for and uh, had a few poles down. And on Saturday, this horse jumped beautifully. He had one fence down, but we remember he's a young horse. And Max is, of course, thinking about the future with this horse and has tried not to overuse him this winter. And uh, he was a little disillusioned after the first phase, but that really is the sport and sign of a good rider is really to, that was really well ridden. He just brought him slightly to the inside to jump, jump through there. And really a top, a top rider has to keep fighting to the end. He's just lost a shoe there now, lost a front shoe. You can just see with the rubber padding inside. Normally on this footing, it should be no problem but uh, you just see him stumbling there. For some horses, when they lose a shoe, it just immediately takes away their balance. I just hope he's gonna be okay now for these last three jumps. Beautiful. A brilliant clear from Max Kuda for Austria. He remains on his 17 penalties brought forward. Hugo Simon there, former triple winner of this crown. Absolutely delighted with his fellow compatriot, Max Kuna, Chardonnay. The nine-year-old go clear here in Gothenburg. He's just pointing to the shoe on the ground there, just asking him to pick it up for him. You just see this is the moment where he loses the shoe. He just trod on the shoe on takeoff and then loses it there. But uh, sign of a very stable horse and a really fantastic riding from Max. There's Max's wife and groom and Hugo, a big smile on his face, and rightly so, raising his arm. There's a lot has gone into this result today. There's, uh, there's been an awful lot of offers to buy this horse, and Max has really put a lot of effort in to keep this horse for the sport. He really wants to go far with this horse, and it's a great, great combination in the making.
but we have Hartley around. We will, this, will this be the first of many, Phil? We've four have gone. 26 starters, 20 go forward through to the next round. Another complete course later on this afternoon. Now for Australia on 17 penalties also. Edwina Tops Alexander, Caratina de Chaudeur. 11 year old mare by Caratino. Okay, Edwina's mare has actually jumped very well both days, but both days having a fence down. She ended up 23rd after the first day and 19th after the second day, so that has left her what you would say out of contention she is riding here for the class today there is actually a lot of money to win in this class and of course a very very prestigious competition in its own right these two rounds today and caratina a very careful mare and edwina just sometimes having to really support her over the back bars really giving everything the mare and Edwina jumps over the top and pays the penalty. Really slowing down in front of that triple bar. Just the fourth add then, the waves have come down again. So four to add to the 17, Edwina Tops Alexander finishes on a score of 21 with Caratina de Chateau for Australia. Yeah, she really has to, uh, has to admit that that was her mistake. Um, it's always the same when you ride these wavy planks in the middle the chance to knock them down is extremely high and Caratina de Yota jumping really a fantastic round and Edwina riding a really gutsy round and she's also looking at this now she's finished in this competition she's not going to win the World Cup final but she's looking also towards the Olympics she's going to ride this mare at the Olympics and this is a good test to see where they are Lying in 21st place for France. Kevin Stout riding for Joy von Sorgvlit. 13 penalties carried forward. This horse just showing a small lack of form both days. Just a couple of times, not, not pushing um, on takeoff in the Oxes and, and having a couple of mistakes before that. But they did. They did do a little practice outside, just jumping a few small jumps and had a very, very good feeling with him. And that's the reason they're letting him go into the final today. Kevin, a very, very focused man and a very ambitious rider. He will be going away from this this weekend. Oh, these planks. I must say for Joy, really starting to show his form again. Disappointing that he's finding this on the last day of the championship. But that's sometimes the way it goes. <laughs> nice to see this horse finish on such a good round. I mean, I would have to say that the, mi the mistake in this case was actually not Kevin's. It's possibly a little bit what we've been seeing the other days, just on takeoff for Joy, just pushing his hindquarters to the side and clipping that stupid plank off with his hind legs. Um, and a reasonably unfortunate mistake, just showing it here. Kevin aims to jump on the right, actually takes off, gets the front legs on the right, and then just twisting and knocks it down behind. But that's what those planks are there for. That's why he put them there. That's why he put them in that position. And that's why he put them at one meter 60. He didn't put them there just because they look nice. So the last three competitors with four faults all have had the wavy planks down. So Kevin Stout for France finishes after round A with 17 faults on for Joy Van Zoglit. Jean-Marie Bonneau there. And we stay with France. Patrice Delavo riding Lacrimoso. Jean-Marie Bonneau was, of course, French chef to keep, Brazilian chef to keep, and is now 
trainer for Kevin and Patrick. Oh, he's done it again. Oh, what a sod. I was worried when I was walking the course. I spoke to Jean-Maurice and I said, oh, the double's going to be difficult for Lacrimoso. And he said, yeah, but it's not so bad. It's coming home. And just seeing that wall, it is, like I said, this this picture, it's, it's a new... It's a new way of being able to, to put the print on the wall. Beck and Hoyne, of course, in Germany, the company that, that's really bringing that into the sport. And uh, it's just a little bit of a different situation for them. And this horse, of course, did stop at the water mat on Saturday. And the problem is now, when, when these things happen, the concentration is gone and it is normal for the rider you know, just to have that bit of pressure on the horse. You see Patrice really concerned that he's not going to jump that. They always say with a genius, it's a fine line. <laughs> All the French very disappointed. But they had to slightly expect that going into today uh, with Lacrimoso already um, being a little, little bit, uh, a little bit nervous uh, the last day. They did have to expect that it could happen again today. It's very, very difficult to gain the trust um, over a period of two days like this. Oh, and he was quick. Patrice did well not to fall off. <laughs> And he rode straight over the middle. I mean, I think some of these people are going to be have to be told that that plank is wavy. I think they think it's a straight plank. Patrice Delevo adds nine penalties to his 13. So 22 they finish on the round A this afternoon. Patrice Delevo, France, and Lacrimoso. Max Kuhner's clear, has bumped him up a few places. Won't be troubling the leaders. And he is edging, he's edged up the leaderboard. Now for the Netherlands, Michael van der Vluten and BDL Group's Verdi. 12 penalties brought forward from the previous rounds. In 19th place now, Michael van der Vluten. Yeah, Michael had a fence down in both, both rounds. And um, because of the point system, uh, there are one or two riders who, who actually had one more jump down than him, but because of the point system and the fact that he was very slow the first day, does leave him just that little bit lower. He was a little disappointed uh, to be in this position, but this is the rules of the World Cup final, that it's on points the first two days and that the faults are added coming into the final. And especially yesterday, there were a lot of four falter rounds and they were placed on their time. So if you didn't have it, that was well written. <laughs> If you didn't have a fast four-falter yesterday, you were really penalized in the pointing. Beautifully um. ridden by Michael today. <laughs> Expression of enjoyment from Verdi as Michael van der Vluten goes clear here in the Scandinavian. He stays on his 12 penalties. That is sure to help him get up the leaderboard. He's currently in 20th place, uh, sorry, in 19th place. Of course, we're jumping in reverse order. So Michael van der Vluten clear with BDL Group's Verdi. But they really showed there what the reason is why have they have been on the Dutch team now on so many of these medal winning occasions. They're still there on day three when it gets really big and it gets really difficult um, and horses and riders get tired, this couple are there. And that was a top class round that they produced today. Jos Verloy for Belgium, competing at his second Longin FEI World Cup final. He was fifth a year ago in Las Vegas. He's currently in 18th place on 12 penalties, similar to Michael van der Vluten. Jos Verloy for Belgium and Sunshine. 
former rider, ride of Britain's Scott Brash. Sunshine. Yes, of course, was like Michael, a little disappointed. He'd won down both days, silly mistakes to be low down the leaderboard. But like we said before, it's on the points. And uh, he has to come in now and jump a clear round like his friend Michael did. And Jos, an extremely motivated young man. He really is uh, working and doing and trying to do everything he can possibly think of to improve himself. And it shows. I mean, this young man is riding right at the top of the sport. And even though his top horse has been sold, he just went out there and produced another one. Training, of course, with Harry Schmolder, stable jockey for his parents. And Yossa's mum was telling me, she's Scottish actually, Yossa's mum. Um, she was telling Oh, right up the middle and missed his distance. Oh. Oh la la. That plank coming really quick on the left turn out of the triple combination. And uh, it really does depend where the horses and riders land when they come out of that triple and how much effort they've had to make to jump those two oxers, how much concentration and balance is there to jump that plank. And yet again, Phil, it's very clever course building from Santiago uh, to put these wavy planks in that spot. Jess, uh, absolutely, we've had nine competitors. My stats show me that five of them have had that plank down. And as you quite rightly said at the very beginning, top of the program, Jess, all those five have jumped, they've actually taken it down from the middle. Yeah, I have to say, and you can just see there, Jos wanted to go on the five, and uh, Sunshine just said, five is not for me today, and just added a little stride at the end, and then they were in the middle and a bit too deep. He'll be disappointed with that. Jos Volley finishes on 16 penalties with Sunshine for Belgium. But it shows you, Phil, all these riders know that the wavy planks you try to ride on the low side. Now the second of the two riders for Poland, Jaroslaw Skrzynski, with the aptly named Crazy Quick. They've come forward on 11 penalties. Won two of the qualifiers in his league to get here to the final. Currently in 18th place on the final day. Well, this is a very experienced pair, and they have been very successful. What we're seeing again, the horse was jumping to the right, on Saturday and it's very extreme. You can just see going up there two to three. It's really difficult for him to, to keep crazy quick straight now. This is this is something he's really gonna have to deal with. Of course, when you, oh, yeah. I'm not sure how much further he's gonna go. And when you're in that position as a rider, you're thinking very fast to choose your line and you can just see him really trying to keep him there. I mean, Crazy Quick is nat naturally a very feisty horse, always wanting to go forwards. But he is jumping on limit here today, and you can just see him just arranging himself on the lines to the jumps. And the last down, so that was two down, eight to add for Jaroslaw Skrzynski and Crazy Quick. They complete round A on 19 penalties. 19 penalties for Jaroslaw Skrzynski and Crazy Quick for Poland. But this is the problem, when the right ability is not there, it is very, very difficult to try to even halfway jump a course like this. Literally just ran into that oxer. And they're also trying to, trying to get him back, but just kept running and got too deep. Now a combination who has been the subject of much admiration over the last few days here in Gothenburg, Chris Chug for Australia, riding Gabrielle Kuna's eight-year-old mare, Crystalline. Jess, they come forward on 11 penalties, but this mare has been brilliant, hasn't she? Absolutely, and I mean, all credit, I mean, for sure, the talent of the mayor is outstanding, but also all credit 
to Chris and his girlfriend, Gabby. I mean, Gabby sold her first horse with a profit and went to Germany and bought this Crystalline as a five-year-old, and they've produced her the whole way, or normally Gabby has produced her the whole way. Um, and, I mean, all credit to them in their league, in their country, that they're able to produce a horse of this cali calibre. Um, and it just shows you how the sport um, through all continents of the world. But I have, I have a feeling we're going to see this combination <laughs> together for the last time this weekend, as uh, there's really a lot of talk that this, that this mayor will change hands after this event. And I, I can really understand that. I mean, Chris, Chris and Gabby, they live, they live from, from the sport and, and they do have to make sure that the financial side of it is there to produce the horses. So you understand that they would actually sell the mare but it's really wonderful to watch this pair. And I do say the combination yet again, because she is a wonderful mare. She's very, very talented, but this man is a wizard. An absolute wizard, and he's giving her a peach of a ride, helping her every stride that he can. Come on, come on. Oh, too deep at the last. Oh. Just that one down. Four to add to the 11, but another super round from the youngest horse here in Gothenburg in the London FEI World Cup. They finish on 16 penalties. Chris Chuck with the wonderful eight-year-old mare, Chris Deline. And Chris showing his appreciation for this wonderful mare, as you say, owned by Gabby Kuna, with his girlfriend. It's been a real treat, Jess, hasn't it? It's really been a treat. And, you know, this mare is wonderful. And this man is wonderful. He's 55 years old. He rides about 10 to 12 horses every day. He's as fit as a fiddle, and he rode a blinder. And what's wonderful is to see the appreciation of the fans here in this arena, uh, bar giving him a standing ovation. Uh, they're carrying him out of this arena. And it's lovely to see that even when a rider does have a mistake like this, that the crowd appreciate what they have achieved. We've said. <laughs> oh, Penny, look! Wow, right on the knees there. Oh, yeah, look, Big, oh. We're looking at. Okay. Well, there you go. The nerves show themselves in different ways. Well, you mentioned Chris Chuck was 55 years old, and what a superb round this man isn't. He's 22, and what a name for himself he's made as well. Nicholas Craig, Craig for Germany, riding Corella. Like Chris Chug, 11 penalties on the board coming into this round. Nicholas really enjoying this, this championship. This is his first championship at senior level. And uh, even though he had two fences down on Saturday, uh, his father is with him. And of course, his father, an experienced horseman, also Grand Prix winner before. And uh, he said, come on, son. Let's just keep going. There's a good class in there on Monday. Let's just keep going. And I think that's really the right attitude. And uh, he's been really taken into the fold of the German team here. Very strong German team here and all very supportive. Right. Well, I'm not going to say it again because if I keep saying it, people are saying I'm lecturing. But he, <laughs> did, <laughs> he did jump right in the middle. You were lecturing about 11 o'clock last night, if I remember rightly. <laughs> <laughs> You can just see now the, the concentration after that l light mistake, the concentration just gone a little bit there in that line. This is something that can happen. And um, it's an experience that this young man will make. When he would come back another year, he would have that mistake on the plank and he would stay cool and collected and then he would come home with one fence down. Nicholas Craig, he, uh, he now puts his penalties from 11 up to 23 after that round. Nicholas Craig and Corella 5 for Germany. I'm just looking at the scores because Michael van der Vluten ran the middle again. Before I come back to Michael, that was, again, Jess, as you yeah. say, you might, mean, be, you might be saying that quite a lot. Yeah, <laughs> you can just see he, she went a little bit out there and he ended up a little bit flat coming into that combination. Mary, she just lost her over the outside shoulder there. But I think next week on YouTube, we're going to have to have the, the Santi's uh, plank jumping class. Plan uh, Santi builds a wavy, wavy plank and shows the riders where exactly they should jump over the wavy plank. 
I was just going to mention about Michael van der Vluten's clear because he finished on 12 and already Michael van der Vluten will have moved up at least four, pla four places so far. Yeah. Still a long way down the leaderboard. Next in the arena, also on 11 penalties, Romain Duguay riding Corrida de Treo. 12 year old mare by Cannon. As I say, 11 penalties on the board, currently in 14th place. Now this would certainly have been a pair that would have been handled as one of the favourites um, coming here to the to the final. But just having mistakes at the wrong moment. First day, of course, jumping a fantastic round. And we're well up the leaderboard. They were seventh the first day and finished up 24th on Saturday, which has just knock, knocked them back. And Roman, a little disappointed with himself. He said he could have been a little softer with the mare. I think he jumped in the middle, didn't I he? I know he did, but <laughs> <laughs> she saw it, though. <laughs> and the mayor really jumping super here today. And Roman giving her a very, very good ride. And she's jumping much straighter today in her body, not running so much to the side in front of the jumps. There, you can just see her at the triple bar. And he paid the penalty for it. That's just a little the problem. She sometimes just drifts off to the side, making it difficult for her to push off. Four added to the 11. Romain Duguay finishes on 15 penalties with Corrida de Trail for Switzerland. From Team Edmonds from the European Championships in Aachen a few months ago. Finishes on 15. You can just see in the last stride, she just does a zigzag, and uh, that's just the danger. And triple bar like that with a big stiff mare like that, when she does the zigzag, it's quite difficult for her to have the elasticity to stretch for that back bar. Michael van der Bluten, I mentioned earlier, he's now in 14th place. He was in 19th. He's already moved up five. Well, you may have heard the expression from 11,000 people just now, and the reason is that we've got the sole representative from our hosts for Sweden, Onrik von Eckermann, Gilandro van den Bosrund. And Henrik doing a very good job with this horse both days. And uh, he had a mistake on Saturday. And uh, his boss did tell him what he thought of him uh, <laughs> when he came out. But uh, that's, that's part of sport. And uh, Henrik is, is a really strong, motivated guy. And he knows how to use that in the right way. And uh, you can just see that this horse jumps also to the right. And as Henrik said himself, oh, he's building a lot of jumps to the right. This horse just a little bit more difficult on the right. He likes to run a little bit deep and does need just that little bit time in front. He's a bit of a slow jumper. Started on nine penalties coming into this round. You can just see he has a very deliberate canter. Uh. Disappointing mistake there because the horse really does have a lot of scope. That would have been a very o easy oxer for him to jump. Disappointing, two down with one time penalty for the Swede. He finishes on 18. 18 penalties for Henrik von Eckmann and Gilandro van der Brosrund. You can just see, I mean, Henrik gives him a great ride the whole way, and he just sits slightly back in the saddle, getting ready for that turn. And here you could just see the horse did not push off. Um, equal on both hind legs and uh, you, you could really see today I mean Henrik did a great job but you could just see a little bit the air gone out of this horse he's not he's not a blood horse it's three days jumping um, you could just have the feeling he was a little bit tired today one of the four combinations in this co one of the four riders in this competition who formerly won the Longin FEI World Cup final. That was back in 2011 on this very horse. And what a performance 
Talibé has put in this weekend. Christian Almond for Germany. Talibé Z, now 16 years old, acting like an eight-year-old. Eight penalties brought forward. Yeah, the Germans watching pensively. Christian's groom also looking very, very nervous. And uh, Christian was really disappointed after the first day. And um, that wasn't with Talibé, no, it was, was with Colour It equally a very good Grand Prix horse. Just had a bad day, had two down. He wanted to save Talobe, and yeah, he paid a penalty for it. That's that's the way it is at this level. If it was another format, he wouldn't have the chance to ride two horses. Uh, what can you do? But he came out fantastically with uh, super double clear on Saturday night and just demolished the opposition, making a turn that nobody else could make with this amazing horse. And uh, Christian will keep cool now. He's just gonna ride for the competition here today and also for his standings in the final. Don't jump in the middle. probably take five here yeah very often adding an extra stride with this horse because he has he has a way of just shuffling around the arena this is looking very good indeed for the man that won on saturday night and he's gone clear christian alman tally bezed and the crowd here the very knowledgeable swedish crowd showing their appreciation having said that of course there's lots of nations visiting gothenburg this weekend to watch this the final day of the london fbi world cup final christian arman and tally bezet go clear which means they remain on eight penalties i think anybody who has any feeling for horses whatsoever can only have the utmost respect for this horse and the beautiful way in which his partner Christian makes everything comfortable for Talobe. Sometimes he just needs to make a little extra stride here. There, there's Judy. She's a bundle of nerves standing there watching, but she's been here to support Christian, and that's really fantastic. Great round. Delighted to see Talobe jumping so good. For Ireland, Dennis Lynch and. 13-year-old stallion all-star and as you can see like Christian Alman forward with just eight penalties and you've got an interesting stat about Dennis this weekend yeah Dennis is actually the only rider to have jumped clear in every round he has jumped three clear rounds Friday clear but he was slow he finished up 22nd on Friday then he was double clear on Saturday night again slow but he went into second place behind Christian Alman and this horse has been jumping absolutely brilliant in 11th place at the moment going into today's competition. Dennis has of course been fighting over the last months very intensively with this horse to gain individual qualification for the Olympics. Ireland has already Bertram Allen who did a super job to qualify and um, this man just missed out on getting his own spot but if something were to happen to Bertram and his wonderful mare, this would be an option. Really good riding there. Just letting, letting All-Star drift out on the six strides to just get that little bit more room because this horse has got a very big, long stride and Dennis always has to give him that bit of room and give him time. Oh, he's a little off it. Oh. Cool, but he reached and he got there. Well, the consistency of this combination have been out absolutely outstanding over the last four days. Dennis Lynch and All-Star remain on eight penalties and still clear throughout the World Cup competitions. That was really a fantastic piece of craftsmanship down there. Lucky on that one, but Dennis really knows this horse inside out and has learned. He said himself, I used to put him under too much pressure, and now I just give him time. And it's really paying off this weekend. Oh, there's Emma, long-time groom Emma. She's come here extra to support Dennis this weekend and All-Star.
Dennis, her friend there. Dennis, a man that needs his group of people around him, like everybody. Needs to have everybody just to keep him calm and relaxed, that he can concentrate on what he's doing. Now down to the top ten for the United States. Peter Lutz riding Robin Dupontu. And the other rider with eight penalties. Level coming into... Oh, oh not now. Whoops. Level with Dennis Lynch and Christian Armand. talking to Robert Ridland, the uh, American chef to keep before. I mean, we, we can't ignore the fact that we're missing a McLean Ward and a BZ Madden here in the American contingent, and that this bunch of riders rel relatively inexperienced at this level. But as he said, it's very difficult for the Americans. The World Cup final quite early this year, landing in the middle of their major circuit. Of course, they all go to Florida, and it's... Uh, there's a lot of things to be taken into consideration. They all have a bunch of students, they have their owners, and it's not easy for all these riders to leave their continent and come to Europe. Even though this is the World Cup final, it can sometimes be difficult. Twelve added to the eight, leaving Peter Lutz on 20 penalties after that round on Robin de Pontil. Yeah, you could just see poor, poor Robin. He just looks at the at the picture and said, "What is that? I'm not going to jump over a crane." And uh, yeah, an inexperienced mistake. That's where we are with nine to jump. Christian Armin in the number one position at the moment, along with Dennis Lynch. They, of course, have remained on their scores from the from Saturday's competition. We've still got the top nine to go, and here is the ninth on the leaderboard. Marco Kutcher and Chakarina. This man has done a beautiful job with this wonderful mare now all weekend. He's really nursed her around. He's just stuck to his plan. He's doing his thing, not watching what the others are doing around him. And uh, he's had uh, he's had two great rounds. And okay, he had two down in the jump off yesterday or on Saturday. Had a little bit of a cut, and she got a little bit long. Had two mistakes, but uh, he's just sticking to his plan and coming through there. And she's they've worked out the planks so they last it few seem, riders. Yeah, it seems there is something in the Bush Telegraph that they've said, well, <laughs> you better not jump over the top of those planks. <laughs> but, you know, it wouldn't have taken a rocket scientist to work that out before. Great round here from Marco and Chakarina. And this man has really produced this mare in top form coming into this championship. That's put pressure on the leaders because Marco Kutcher is gone clear, which leaves him on six penalties. Marco Kutcher for Germany, clear, stays on the six penalties. Eight left to jump, and of course, this the first of two complete rounds of competition this afternoon. The top 20 from this class eligible for that second round. And we really mustn't underestimate what these two have just achieved. That was a class round from a relatively inexperienced mare. The rider is super experienced, but the mare is relatively inexperienced. And he has really nursed her along all weekend, and it's paying off now. There's the team vet, groom, everybody there. They're delighted. He's, he's going above his expectations at this stage. Marcus Erning. He'll be second to last to go there, warming up Conado. And of course, Phil, the pressure now being put on these riders are still to come because they know, yet again, there's a lot of clear rounds coming. Callum Solom on the United States of America on five penalties with BDL Wizard. And this combination 
have been flying the flag for the US. Sadly, she's just added four to that five. Uh, Callum, we've seen uh, over here in, in Europe and in America, of course not, we've seen relatively uh, a small amount from her. She was in Falstabo on the, on the team last year. But she's, she's a real professional, this girl. She's a gutsy girl. She's been working all her life, uh, riding 10 to 12 horses every day. And uh, she really, I you know, she knows what she's doing. Although she doesn't have the experience at this level, she knows what she's doing. This is a very good horse. She took a really long, long time to produce this horse after it came over from the VDL stud in Holland. And uh, she says herself, you know, really, she said, when I was a kid, I learned everything from Carol Hoffman Thompson. And uh, there was no messing around there. And, you know, you can see she's able to support this horse. An unfortunate mistake on the first jump. Not quite sure. It's normally something coming from the practice arena. Maybe too long waiting before she comes in. Didn't have the concentration. Can also be the nerves of the rider. But a really good round. Rattles the back pole of the final fence, the Oxer, but it stays there, but it was four to add from that first fence. Just the first fence down leaves Callum Solem on nine penalties with VDL Wizard for United States. You can just see Callum coming to the first jump. And yeah, Wizard just takes the balance a little bit to the right in the last stride. Not really a lot of reason for that mistake. One of these unfortunate things that do happen at these championships. But she will be delighted with Wizard with that round. He's really been jumping his socks off for her this weekend. And I think Callum has done a, a really great job and it will certainly help her uh, direction team this year. Now the world number one in the Longin FEI global rankings for France, Simone de Lestre and Classic Bois Margot. Another one on five penalties. This pair, on paper, really are serious contenders for the title, even though they are sitting now on points just behind the, the leaders. Simon doing an extra stride there, just to make sure that the horse was, was with him, just in case he would have a spook. When you're going a little bit forwards and he has a spook, there's a whole not a whole lot you can do, but like that, he was able to just support him. Very experienced riding from Simon there. And the owners have especially not taken semen from this horse this, this season to let him concentrate on this final. Difficult sometimes for a breeding salient to have to do both sport and the breeding. And Simon is normally a very cool customer under pressure. Got very deep there. Really paid the penalty for that. It was much too deep. Well, two down has surely put the world number one out of contention. Eight added to the five, and that's the disappointment showing on the team's faces. Finishes on 30, the world number one. Simon de Lestre, classic board Margot. That's very disappointing indeed. Yeah, and it's written all over his face, but I mean, this was a very untypical error for this man. Let's just have a look at it again. Just gets that bit too deep. And then the horse just stays on the forehand and has a second mistake. Um, really, yeah, not something we'd expect from this combination. But that's what happens in these championships. And it's one person's turn not to be at the front. And another one shines. <laughs> Stay with France. Penlop Leprevo for France, leading lady rider in the global rankings. Penlop Leprevo, Vagabond de la Pomme brilliant start here on Friday winning the first leg then had a very disappointing last fence down to give her five penalties just see Penelope giving him a very positive ride Vagabond is a horse that uh, really needs really needs Penelope to keep him keep him going forwards all the time he's not such a blood horse and 
just needs that support. And you can just see her supporting him there the whole way. Of course, that mistake on the last jump on Saturday, really costly for them. Penny Lopes said that she felt that he landed a little dead on the oxer before and just made a quick decision to make the six. And yeah, the rest is history. Jumping a very safe round here. Just the last line. Has to keep him motivated now for this vertical. He's not a leading lady rider in the world for nothing. Penelope Leprevo jumps a superb clear, and that has put a smile on the French team. Penelope Leprevo remains on that five penalties with Vagabond de la Pomme. But this is absolutely Penny Lopes' life. She really is such a competitor, and she had only one thing in her mind today, and that is to get in there and jump a clear round and just get it done, and I have to say she just did get it done. Second, of course, in a year ago in Las Vegas, and now Penelope Lepreveau has put serious pressure on the top five. And of course, they've all got to come in this top lot and jump again. Great round from Penlop Leprevo and Vagabond de la Pomme. Now on four penalties, we've come to the top five. Nicola Philippards and H&M Forever Darko de Tillinden. This man has done a great job so far has really produced this horse well up to this level. They've really come a long way together. And had what I saw was a very unfortunate mistake on Saturday evening in the bending line to the right to that oxer on the seven strides. And he just got slightly stuck, as you can see there again, just getting slightly stuck on the left of the bridle. And Nicola really having to then put the leg on and bring him up to the jump. And that's how he got his mistake on Saturday. Nicola, of course, will be aware of that now. And uh, you can just see him just trying to play a little bit with, with the bit to keep Forever Darko straight. Oh. Well, a similar situation as we saw earlier with Simon de Lastra. Eight to add to the four for Nicola Philipparts for Belgium. Oh, they're looking on. Ludo looking slightly pensive. <laughs> Finishes on 12 penalties. And let's remind ourselves that Penelope Leprevo was on five. She remains on five. So it's still around to come. But Penelope jumps up a place from sixth into fifth at this stage. 12 penalties now for Nicola Philipparts and H&M Forever Darko. Yeah, and Nicola really falling victim to the clever course building of, of Santiago here. Forever Darko, a horse that he's really motivating and keeping together, and Santiago's opening them in these lines. He's saying, come on, just keep galloping, just keep galloping. And you can just see the horse getting a little bit flat in that line and having those two mistakes. Final four for the Netherlands. Harry Smulders, 12-year-old Emerald. OP, three penalties brought forward. Harry will, of course, be had a good a good meal today to give him plenty of energy now to wrap his legs around Emerald. Emerald, of course, very flashy jumper, very careful jumper, beautiful to watch, but Harry really needs to support him. He really needs that motivation from Harry's legs. And Harry, he knows this, and he's well able to do it. But it is the first championship also for this horse. And uh, 
Just going to be interesting to see how he sees it through to the end. Just keep the motivation up and the ambition. Really jumping in his shoes a lot. Come on. This is brilliant. Come on, Harry. From the Dutchman. <laughs> and he's gone clear. Yes, he stays on three penalties. Now the pressure's on Dusa, Erning and Gerdat now. What a brilliant round from Harry Smolders and Emerald. They remain with those three penalties. And, and really, Phil, this horse is growing up. This was a fantastic round from horse and rider. The two of them, they know each other now inside out. And Harry's saying, come on, Emerald, you know, you can do it. He touched quite a few poles, but so have the others. And Harry, really, you can really see super picture there how in the last stride, really wraps his legs around him and says, come on, boy. There's the whole Dutch contingent supporting. Down to the top three on the first of the two competitions this afternoon. Final day of the Longines FEI World Cup final here in Gothenburg. The combination that won the final two years ago. Daniel Deusser with the 13-year-old Cornette de Moor. Like Harry Smulders, three penalties. The suspense is really being put on now for the last round. And this is another combination who are carrying a lot of expectations on their backs today. Half owner Stefan Conter is here. Double H Farms are also here. And Daniel, of course, has done this so many times before, like his team compatriots. He's really a seasoned competitor in this situation, and he has proved so many times that he can deal with the pressure. And this horse has been showing recently fantastic form. Daniel takes the mistake on Saturday completely in his own cap. He walked it 20 times, six strides, seven strides, six strides, seven strides opted for the six and had the mistake coming into the triple and today it's looking proper. And the crowds here in the Scandinavian confirming how proper it was, Jess, because serious appreciation from a great round from the former champions. Daniel Dusa, Cornette de Moore, like Harry Smulders, remains on three penalties, two to go. I'm just in heaven here, Phil. This is sport that we are being shown today of the highest class. These riders, these horses are in such amazing form. Just look how Daniel and Cornet D'Amour, with such a lightness and elasticity come through the combination. This horse jumps every jump for a 10. Like Emerald, an unbelievably ambitious jumper. The German quite happy with that they want to just keep quiet for the next round it's, it's yeah. not over yet for the Germans I tell you because they're certainly well in there he's bidding to be the first man to win four Longin FEI World Cup finals Marcus Erning with Coronado lying in second place with two penalties his groom Kay was very happy with Coronado this morning. Marcus was riding him a little bit and sh she felt very comfortable. He was very loose in his body. Looked fit and well of himself. And Marcus, of course, no problem with nerves. He had a great win last night with Preta 2 in a Grand Prix. And uh, he should be feeling very confident, motivated going into this final. So, Marcus, get the wavy plank in the right spot. Beautifully ridden. You can just see him in the last stride, just opening out gently to, to get it in the perfect spot. Beautiful riding.
What a blow for the former world number one, Marcus Erning. He adds four to that two. You don't need a calculator to now realize that on six penalties, Marcus Erning and Germany, Cornado, slip down now below Penlop Lepreveau and Harry Smolders and Daniel Dusev. Penelope Lepreveau now moved up into third place. Harry Smolders, Daniel Dusa, both on three penalties. You can just see there, and he jumps into the combination, he lands a little dead, and the flow of the movement forwards is stopped, and then just on takeoff, he tips with his toe. That's a, a disappointing mistake. And there is confirmation of that leaderboard at the moment, but there is a man in the arena. It's the defending champion. It's the, it's the Olympic champion. It's the man on zero penalties in the lead at the moment, defending his title, Steve Gerdat for Switzerland with Corbinian. And it is. Just gonna say, Jess, the last three horses all by Cornet Oblensky, interestingly. You're starting to become a Cornet fan. For those who know him as Windows van der Hefnick before also. So it's like this, Phil. He's on zero and Harry's on three. Even if he has a fence down, he's going to still be well in there in the shakeup. So it's already starting to unfold. So if this man jumps a clear round, it's really starting to get exciting. And of course, the combination of Steve Gerda and Thomas Fuchs have been together since Steve was about 17 years old. And they have achieved so much together. They have so much trust. And they know exactly how to produce a horse for a championship. They've done it before. Will they do it again today? Corbinian jumping his socks off. One to go. Defending champion. Yeah. Clears the last. Stays on zero. Steve Gerdat for Switzerland and Corbinian. You don't need to write it down. It's a naught. Stays on zero. Well, Jess, we've talked off camera over the last few days about the man who just loves the big occasion. Absolutely. You know, he's he could just handle it, can't he? He really can, and he's. Uh, a rider not unlike Jerome Doubledum, who really prepare themselves mentally, physically, and put an awful lot of thought into the production of their horses for these championships. And um, Steve is someone, you know, he can take himself and his horses out of the limelight, even for one or two months, and just gently produce. And like he said himself in the press conference, he, he is in the lucky position, which he achieved himself by being the defending champion that he didn't actually have to qualify for the final. Um, so he was able to produce this horse really, really quietly through the winter months for this final. And you can just see the, the relief in his face. Team chef Andy <laughs> Kistler not too far away from a heart attack. The vet looking very relaxed. Obviously the horse is very fit because the vet looks very relaxed. <laughs> What a tremendous start to the afternoon here in Gothenburg. Steve Gerdat stays in the lead after the first part of this competition today. Joint second place, as you can see there. Harry Smolders, Daniel Dusa, Penelope Leprevo. She's just over one fence behind them in fourth place. Marco Kucci, Machakarina on six, as is former winner Marcus Erning. And Christian Arm and Talibet said on eight. Uh, Jess, a cracking start to this two-round competition. Of course, the top 20 have got to come back and, and uh, um, do this again over another course. But the defending champion, he is, he's looking very measured. He's looking very measured. He's looking fantastic. And we can be absolutely sure that he will not gallop through the last jump like he did last year in Las Vegas. That does not happen two times. Um, the horse looking very, very safe. The other horse is also looking very safe. And one thing I must say we have with these horses up the top, like uh, Cornet D'Amour and uh, Harry Smolders, Harry Smolders Stallion Emerald. These are very, very 
careful of horses. And, you know, when you have horses at this level that are so careful, yes, for sure the rider has to give them great support, but these horses want to jump clear rounds. And that helps, really, for a rider who is in a little under pressure in this situation. You can't tell me that any of those riders in the first eight are not under pressure. But when you have a horse that goes to the jump and he wants to leave the jump up, even if you are a little bit under pressure, Thank you.
Okay, it's, it's about two minutes on the clock to the arena, but you want to get about 40 seconds, yeah? That's okay, no problem. Okay, okay. Are you going to, so you've got no, do you have the flags in the, in the beginning or not? You go, are you going to go black? You're not going black, okay. Welcome back to the Scandinavia here in Gothenburg. This is the 2016 Longines FEI World Cup jumping final, and we are on the last competition, and the excitement over the last three days has been immense. But what has happened over the last hour has topped that. We are in for the most unbelievable final round of this incredibly prestigious competition. It's the 14th time that we've had the final here in Gothenburg arguably the home of the final and this year has not let anyone down it has been absolutely fantastic i'm phil gazala i'm very privileged to be sitting up here at the edge of this incredible arena where once everyone's back in their seats it'll be 11,000 people supporting the top 20 riders and i'm also privileged to be sitting next to my colleague jess Curtin, who is giving us the most excellent insight into how these riders are feeling jess this is going to be just incredible. Quite interesting for you. We, well, let's, we actually, there's Christian Alman there, of course. He's been incredible over the last three days. Moved up from 25th to 8th going into this round. But Jess, you've been here. You've been to World Cup finals. You've been number two in the world. What is going through these people's minds now? At this moment, uh, at this stage, they're sitting on their horses, so most of them are really, at this phase, just concentrating, feeling how the horses are after the first round, and gently warming them up in preparation. Most of them will be just gently visualizing the course in their heads. They've walked the course, they've made their plan. There's a lot of decisions to be made out there in this course, and uh, they'll just be running through that and keeping themselves as relaxed as possible and their horses. You know, they have to keep, this is the fourth round, for some horses it is the fifth round and uh, they need to keep the energy levels up but these horses are fit and um, it's basically just a waiting game at this stage. Quite sombre out there, very serious. But, but it is very sombre because it's the quiet before the storm. Um, you have to understand the riders have to sometimes put themselves a little bit in their own little world so as not to be interfered from people from the outside. We did see a quick shot of, of Robert Ridland, chef to keep for the USA. He's got two riders there. Peter, Peter Lutz would get us underway. Henri von Eckermann flying the flag for our hosts here in Gothenburg. Unfortunately, not in contention because this they jump in reverse order now. So this, these are the what you might call the bottom of the the bottom of the 20. The top 20 come through. World number one in ninth. Bad round earlier on this afternoon. Simon de Lestra. He's going to struggle. Michael van der Bluten, he jumped a few places with his wonderful partner, Verdi. Another great round for him. He jumped seventh places this afternoon, up from to 11th from 19th. And then we get down to the top through, Jess. Well, Jess, what can I say? You know, the final two in the ring have, have won this before. We've got the defending champion, Steve Godat. We've got Daniel Dusa with Cornette Moore, who won a couple of years ago. But I mean, Penelope Leprevo, Harry Smolders, they're all in it. Yeah, I mean, we have really got the creme de la creme of the people in form, the horses in form at the this moment we have a Harry Schmolders he has not yet won a championship and he is really ready to do that he's burning in form at the moment and Emerald jumped a fantastic first round there is Jos Verloy he had yet again a fence down but he's going to try and come back in and get a clean sheet in the next round it's so close at the top this course is very difficult things could still happen but when you look at the list you think it's going to be down to these three men Daniel Deusser is one of them he is one of these very hot favorites Steve Gerda there he he is with Thomas Fuchs and he is the man if he jumps a clear round it's all over if he has one fence down um, he still can be on the podium there's a man who's won it three times Hugo Simon standing together with his wife Margaret they're here to support the only Austrian rider Max Kuhner who jumped a super clear in the first round I wanted to make a comment about Steve just there Steve Gerda Olympic champion 
defending champion. He was strolling around there as if he was going down the street. Very relaxed. It's, yeah, it, it's uh, sometimes uh, looks looks can be slightly different to what's going on. Uh, Steve is for sure under pressure at this point. He's for sure nervous. He does have in the back of his head what he did in Las Vegas, galloping straight through the last fence. He's not going to forget that, but because of these things you learn out of these things and you learn how to deal with it all these riders they psychologically know how to deal do these things they have their tools uh, they're going to go in here if something goes wrong then they've really been under pressure because these people should not crack under pressure and these horses most of them are ready for this as well right jess opportunity to take us through this second course now this is really a matching course to the first round. Sometimes you have the second round a little easier. Start on the right, the Longines Auxer, bending seven strides to a 160 vertigo, the FEI jump, then turning right out of the corner. There's only three rails, it's a skinny white vertigo. Six strides down to a wide Auxer, and then a very, very long four strides. It's on 19 meters 50 to a 1 meter 52, 1 meter 60 Auxer. That's a big jump. Bending turn there on the bend as they jump this Ariad vertical. And then it's a nice, what we call just a nice six strides into the triple combinations, eight meters and 11 meters. That plank and that vertical are one meter 60. I think we're gonna see many riders riding seven strides into that combination because of those two verticals. Long run around the outside, Hennis and Maurits Oxer, a nice seven strides down to a deceiving jump. It's a very tall silver poles, three silver poles, one meter 60 with a blue mat really behind. And then we have our favorite golden oxer with a rocking horse underneath. And then we have a difficult line. It's 23 meters into this vertical oxer on eight meters. There will be five and six strides going in there. And then we have 20 meters 50 to the Longines at one meter. 60 vertical to finish now that line i think is very very difficult for the riders to really make a plan what they want to do santiago he wants to see them go up there on five and four but i think you will see there will be other riders they will decide to go on six and on five but i have to say the horses need scope to jump out of that combination if they go on the six jess as a rider you've had tremendous success yourself in this arena tell us a little bit about the, the Swedish crowd, the Scandinavian, this wonderful, wonderful atmosphere. What is it like riding in here? It's incredible to ride in here. As a rider, you come in and you don't feel just that it's an amazing atmosphere. You want to give a little bit extra for these fans. These people are fans of our sport and our sport is not, is not football. Um, so we are lucky to have so many fans. There's not just Swedes sitting here, there's people from all over the world who buy their tickets each year when the show is finished to make sure that they have a spot for next year. And it's incredible. And when you jump a clear round in this arena, it doesn't matter what nationality is, you get carried out on a big puffy pillow. And I can tell you, it's one hell of a feeling. I don't know what to say to that. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, it's just so exciting. The atmosphere here is you can cut it with a knife. This is an incredible climax. It's so close. And all those pairs up there, each one of them can win it. And of course, this the most prestigious indoor championship in the sport globally. 19 leagues, over 800 competitors took part over the last nine months to qualify to get to this final. We had 36 on the first day. That's what it dwindles down to. We're now down to the last 20. And this is where it all matters. The final day, of course, Jess, some of these horses have jumped on a Friday, Saturday. A nice day off yesterday for the horses, a day in between, given some relaxing. Absolutely, and they're all looking very, very fresh. And like we've said before, our sport has become so modern. Everything, there is attention to detail. It's really incredible. I mean, the ground in here is, yes. I want to just point out that that shows you how loud this crowd gets. Look at that young baby there with earmuffs on, because that's what 11,000 people does to you. Yeah, yeah, he's son, <laughs> son of a woodcutter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he still has to develop his taste for show jumping, but it'll come with time. But no, really, there's such attention to detail. The ground is fantastic. The jumps, it's very light building of the jumps. Santiago has been very protective of the horses. He hasn't started building his oxers too wide until today, and even today, they're really not at limit width. So there's an awful lot of thought into it. The horses are fresh, the riders are motivated, and I think we are in for just the most outstanding final round here in Gothenburg. That man there has the job of getting us 
underway of opening the final session. Of course, if we were to get two riders on equal points at the end of this competition, there would be a jump off. It doesn't happen very often, but that could possible. That's Peter Lutz, one well, of two representatives for the United States. Okay, you can just see, this, this is with some of the things like we had the other day. They call the rider up, they want to be on time, they call the rider up just a little early. And the horse, he can't see the arena from there because where they come in is a little lower. And when the crowd start to clap, I must say, I'd spin in my heels and run back to the practice arena as well. It's quite daunting. Well, we can see that he's now in the arena. There he goes. So we get us underway. The final day of the London FEI World Cup final here in Gothenburg. Who is going to be crowned the 2016 World Cup champion? We'll know in about an hour and a half. Peter Lutz for the United States with Robin Dupontul. Peter has been uh, fighting hard this weekend, gaining experience. He's had uh, he's had a mixed bunch of luck in the in the arena here, but um, talking to the American chef to keep this is a good rider and this experience is great for him and that's why they're seeing this through today. He's got absolutely no chance to play any part in in the top placings, but this round is important for his future to get more experience. Just made nice seven strides between one and two. This very airy jump, very tall. The riders have to be careful how they get their six strides here because this four is long. And if they get too flat there, that they can catapult that front bar out there very quickly. This jump a little on the bend. He's taken the option of the six. It is the easiest option when you walk the course, but that exactly is the danger. To When you jump in a little flat, it's very difficult to have the horses shortened up on their hind end to have the power to get up and jump that plank. He just came a little up the inside line, making that seven slightly short. The riders need to just keep out on the bend there to get the seven. So now this line, let's see how it rides. Yeah, he's gone on the six like we expected. And there you see the problem. Exactly what the course builder said. He said if they want to go in there on six, the horses have to use a lot of scope to come out over that oxer. That ends the 2016 FBI World Cup campaign for Peter Lutz and Robin Dupontil. They finish with a total of 32, 12 added to his total just before this last round B today. Just gets quite close there to that verdict. You, you see him, he comes forwards over that oxer and keeps the forwards movement. And it's anyway difficult to get the horses to back off for a plank. And he keeps the forward movement and then just pushes so the plank So if he'd taken the seven, he would have landed a little bit deeper, giving a bit more room. Exactly. Would have had a rounder jump over that oxer. The horse would have been a little slower when he went in. And he would have had time to really set up for that plank. Jaroslaw Skrzynski. Dropped two penalty, dropped two places after that last round this afternoon. Now on 19 penalties, Jaroslaw Skrzynski riding the 11 year old by Chaka Blue, Crazy Quick. Jaroslaw and Crazy, they had quite a difficult round in the first round. Crazy Quick just running slightly to one side and making it quite difficult for him to ride the distances clean. Always attacking slightly in the last two strides. Very keen horse to get at it. You could just see that four getting so long for him. He came up the inside on the six, got a very short jump, and then the four just got so long. So he's opted on the seven, which was actually the only option for him. Still had the plank down. in the corners, just trying to ease the horse down a little bit. Just running on that seven stride. You can just see Crazy Quick just attacking the jumps a little bit too much. He takes the six strides as well. Also a problem to come out. That's a difficult line, that last line. I mean, obviously we are seeing the combinations that are not in form. They have been struggling. Um, over the first course. 
so it's not exactly what we will be seeing later in the round but you can already see that it is a real question for those riders how many strides they are going to make in these lines adding 22 his penalties finishing on 39 Jaroslaw Skrzynski for Poland and crazy quick now the chance for the hosts here the sole chance they have to cheer on one of their own as we're just watching Jaroslaw Skrzynski going out of the arena in the arena the crowds have been screaming because there is Onrik von Eckermann for Sweden riding Gilhandro van der Bostrand on 18. We'll watch Henrik jump around here but I'm just going to give some of the distances for everybody watching at home because there's a lot of avid fans and riders at home who are going to be really interested just to have a run through of the distances. One to two is on 29 meters. That vertical is at one meter 60. This vertical is also one meter 60. 24 meters 50 down to this one meter 52, one meter 50 oxer. And it's 19 meters 50 to the 154, 150 oxer. And they're doing a good job so far. This vertical is one meter 60. It's 26 meters 30 into the combination. One meter 52, 160, one meter 60, one meter 60, and it's eight meters and 11 meters. One fifty three, one fifty. This Hennison Mauert Oxer, twenty nine meters down to this one meter sixty silver vertical. Turning the cor corner for home, the gold Oxer is one meter fifty three by one meter sixty. It's twenty three meters into the combination. One meter fifty seven, eight meters. One meter fifty three, one sixty. It's twenty and a half meters coming home to one sixty longy vertical, and that was a very good round there from Hendrik. The crowds showing their appreciation to a round with just that one fence down. Enrique von Eckermann for Sweden, finishing on 22 penalties on Gilihandro van de Bostrand. And I think the interesting thing, at, as you giving out those measurements, Jess, how many times you said one meter 60? I mean, this is right up there. Yes, it's it's right up there, and, and I think, you know, we're we're a, a program for for a lot of avid riders. There's fans of the sport, and there's many riders watching us this afternoon. There's many riders who are competing themselves today, and they're taking a little break to watch this class on their telephones, and they're interested in the distances. They want to go and build that at home, practice it, because they want to ride here too. You know, they say they <laughs> it's everybody's dream to come and ride here. Max Kuhner for Austria jumped to clear in the first of the two rounds this afternoon on 17 penalties at the moment. Max Kuhner, Chardonnay, the nine-year-old stallion. I think it really was to be expected that Max would jump a clear round. Like I've said before, this is really uh, one of the most outstanding up-and-coming combinations at this moment. Max having an unfortunate round with his young mare, Electric Touch, the first day, and Chardonnay having one down on Saturday and jumping a super clear here in the first round. He opted for the Fords. Yeah. This is very clever course building yet again. And he said it himself. He said, yeah, you know, if you're going to do six there, uh, you've got to make the six look like a seven. If you want to do the six stride, you've got to close it. You've got to get up the inside so as you're getting in slow on six strides. But like before in the practice arena, there is a monitor. The other riders will be watching. He's opted for the six. He got a little bit late. That, I think, will be a great marker for the other riders how he rode this last line. Max Kuhner, who's had two cracking rounds this afternoon. He had that one fence down. He's finished on 21 penalties. So... Max Kuhner for Austria, 21 penalties with Chardonnay. Max will, of course, be disappointed that he had one down. I mean, he, he wanted to finish up jumping a double clear, but his, his time will come. He will have the chance to qualify next year riding for Austria, and he could come back and win this with this horse. Wonderful athletic jumping, really nice to see this horse. 
and the whole crew. <laughs> An ambitious wife. Kevin Stout for France. Riding for Joy van Zugvelit. Moved himself up five places after the earlier round today. On 17 penalties at the moment. In 16th place. Jumping in reverse order, of course. Yeah. It's very clever course building. I have to say, this this man is doing such a fantastic job here. He's setting up so many questions for the horses and riders, and these mistakes are coming very easily. That long four really has to be set up before the oxer, before it. You've got to come around the corner, those six strides, get those six strides with a little bit of room so that they can jump with a little bit of speed on the oxer to carry them on the four strides down to that white jump. We'll see what Kevin does in this line. He opts for the six. They're all moving out to the right, looking to get the six. Yeah. And that is the problem. It's eight meters inside that double. And when you get the six strides, unless you can get it really early, that the last two, two strides are with a little momentum, it's a very big question for these horses to jump out. And that is something for Cornet d'Amour and for Emerald. They will, they will have to have a very good plan, those two boys coming through that line. You can just see out of the out of the gallop, he just pushes it out of the way. There's no harm done, but the course builder has just invited the rider to keep to keep going. And you can just see her here, a little deep coming in, and then for Joy really stretching. Okay, this has been a little bit the problem with for Joy this weekend, but really having to stretch there and knocking out the front bar. For Belgium, fifth a year ago in Las Vegas, Jos Voloi with Sunshine, currently on 16 penalties in 14th place. Jos a little bit disappointed when he was walking the course here, but he's, he's such a fighter and he knows that he can come back here and, and finish with a good round and go back for a new day. Jos actually very superstitious. He has his lucky charm from Grandad with him all the time. So let's hope the lucky charm could help him to get a good round here. Oh. See Sunshine really stretching for the back bar. Very powerful horse. Finds it not so difficult to stretch. So he's doing the seven. Ah. It's just a sign horse getting a little bit tired at this stage and just starting to run a little bit beyond the distances. This horse has never done a championship like this before either. And, you know, this is a very testing course to finish. And Jos bring him home nicely. All three parts of the combination down for Jos Valoy with Sunshine. That leaves them on a total of 28 penalties. And just see Jos really trying to get Sunshine under control, trying to contain that momentum forward. And Sunshine just taking it on. He takes the seven strides, but actually ends up a little bit at the angle. And then he's just out of balance. You know, those jumps are 1 meter 60, they're not 1 meter 30. Well, the crowd's really getting behind this young eight year old mare, Crystalline. Chris Jug for Australia with Gabrielle Kuna's Crystalline. 
I think everybody in the stadium here would love to see this pair come home with a clear round. I think it's a very, very tall order to expect this horse to jump a clear round. Um, but we'll all be really, really jumping every jump with him with this with this young star. In 14th place at the moment. Fantastic riding on a fantastic horse. Really angling, you can see him really angling there. This is some mare, isn't it? This is some mare and this is some man. Just, he's really just making extra stride, getting her really together. This last line could suit him if he gets it early. This is a tall order now, come on. Come on, Chris. What a superb way. Look at that, the celebrations from Chris Chuck for Australia with this cracking mare, Crystaline, just eight years old, and Chris Chuck showing his appreciation to this wonderful, wonderful young horse. Chris Chuck for Australia, our first clear here in the final of the competition to the London FBI World Cup final. Finishes on 16 penalties. I think, Jess, we'll be seeing an awful lot more of this lovely horse. But all I can say to you is, we have a lot of viewers in Australia. Come on, lads, there must be somebody there that can buy this horse so this man can stay together with him. This is a partnership for the future. It's going to be really disappointing to see them separated. Well... That's going to be one of the big stories of this entire weekend. Of course, we've got the champions to come, and that shows you that Chris Chug has pushed himself up a couple of places from that brilliant round. But they, Not, they are champions in their own right. They are, indeed. And the crowds, I'm delighted that the crowds have got right behind them and done, shown their appreciation. So now we're going to eight to start for Switzerland. Robin Duguay and Corrida de Trio for Switzerland. Out in 13th place on 15 penalties. Roman, of course, also trained by Thomas Fuchs. And Roman was hoping to have a little bit of a better run this weekend. Things didn't just go his way. Mistake here, a mistake there. This is a difficult line for him with this mare. Managed it really well round the corner. Oh, just ran out of room coming out of the combination. He goes for the five strides. <laughs> Two fences down, eight to add, 23 the final score into 16th position. Romain Duguay and Corrida de Trejo for Switzerland. Just seemed quite long into the combination there. The mare backs off, jumps the plank well, but then she just runs out of place to come out of the combination. Oh, nervous Swiss. Chris Chug in the background needs a little bit of private time to get over his... Is he hiding? He's hiding. <laughs> He's just, he looks stunned standing in the corner there. <laughs> the white armband to signify that in the arena here in Gothenburg, we ha now have the Longin FEI world number one rider for France, Simon de Lestre and classic Bois Margot. A disappointing first round this afternoon, dropped five places, now with a total of 13 penalties into this final round. 
It's of course difficult when you've been really up there in the running for one of the top places. And then you have a disappointing first round, two fences down in the first round. And he knows that he can't win it anymore. He, he, to be in the podium is also nearly impossible. So he's just got to keep fighting here and go in and try and jump another clear round. Re-motivate himself, re-motivate his horse. And of course the other riders outside, the last three will probably have not, not started yet to do some jumps or they're maybe just doing a few little jumps and stopping every now and then in front of the monitor just to, to watch these rounds, to get the feel of this course and to really cement their plans in their heads, what they're going to do. Really, most people doing the six strides there. Well, the world number one, ending on a very good Super. note indeed as he goes clear, Simon de Lestre. <laughs> Certainly ends on a cracking note, having had that disappointing round earlier today. So, clear, the world number one for France, Simon de Lestre and Classic Bois Muggo. That's two clears. That's really the strength of, of the top riders. You know, he had, he's had a great disappointment. He, he didn't come here to be down the ranks. He came here to, to be on the podium. And after the first round, it becomes very clear that he's not going to be on the podium. And to re-motivate yourself and come back and jump a cracking second round like that, it's not an easy thing to do, but it just shows why he is at this moment also number one in the world. And of course, bronze medalist from the European Championships just a few months ago in Arkham. team gold medalist from that same European Championships. Michael van der Bluten for the Netherlands. VDL Group's Verdi. Clear earlier, still on the 12 he picked up on Friday and Saturday. 12 penalties on his card. Michael and Verdi find the form they've been searching for for quite some time now in the first round, jumping a super clear round. And Michael, of course, riding now really for the money in this two-round competition here today. He wants to be sole or joint winner of this class, and that's not going to happen. Bit of a silly mistake there at the blank. The beautiful thing about uh, Sandy's course building is in these lines, he really does leave the options for the riders. He tends not to put the riders in a vice where they have to do something. You know, some horses have bigger strides than others, and he leaves these options. But on the other side, makes it really complicated for the riders to make their plan and have a good, a good way to do the course. Michael van der Bluten, he improved his position in the leaderboard by eight places from that clear earlier today, but four faults added to his score, just also over the 68 seconds time allowed. So five added to Michael van der Vluten's 12 penalties, 17 in all for the Dutchman. This blonde man, he is more on the television camera than any other man in Holland, I think, in show jumping sport. We're now to the top 10 for Belgium. Nicola Felipatz riding H&M Forever Darko Telinden. 11-year-old stallion by Darko, and he has on 12, but now that's gone to 16. Very difficult to see from this camera view, but it really just looked like like Forever Dargo didn't push off at number one. He's on eight strides going into the combination. <laughs> You can really see at this stage, I think this horse is just getting tired. He's given a lot of effort all weekend. And these, these mistakes, he's but that's the thing in a championship. At the, at the end, horses and riders get mentally and physically tired and then these mistakes can come.
Two down, eight added. 20 penalties in all for the Belgium, Nicola Philip Bartz and H&M Forever Darko to Linden. Ah, he trips on takeoff. You can really see it there on the slow motion, just on takeoff. For, you can just see Forever Darko tripping on the front right and then it just leaves him with no power to jump the jump. That was really unfortunate. Father Ludo suffering. <laughs> that was really unfortunate. For the US. Callan Solom riding BDL Wizard. Nine faults carried forward. Callum had the first jump down in the last round, which doesn't really know why one of these things had happened. But then went out and jumped a very good round with his horse. Oh, very deep now. This is going to be tough. Come on. Good horse. Just trying to set herself up there for the line. On the seven strides. Good girl. Well ridden. This girl really has a lot of experience in the saddle and you can see that this experience helps at a moment like this because she can really aid her horse in these difficult situations. Just running down there, getting a little closer. I think she's going on five. Come on, Callum. Good girl. What a great way to finish. Finishes on a clear Callum Solon, VDL Wizard for the United States. She finishes on that nine penalties. And what a great horse and what a super ride she gave him. You could really see her experience there and her talent as she helped this horse through the, through the course. She's taken really a long time with this course. She said when he came to America, he really took a long time to adjust to everything there. And she's taken her time and she's been really good with him and it's paid off here. This is a great, great weekend for her going home. Now for Germany, former world number one, former winner of this final with this great horse, Tally Bet said in 2011, and he's shown exactly how this competition can change over the days. After day one on Friday in 25th place, he's now in eighth place. Christian Arman for Germany, Tally Bet said on eight penalties. Jesse said, you know, this horse has just performed brilliantly yet again over the last few days. Couple. Outstanding, absolutely outstanding. But we expected this, they've been all winter in such unbelievable form. And uh, Christian and Judy really put a lot of effort into this horse over the last few years. He was plagued a little bit with injury and they took their time with him and they, they went around a different road and brought him, nursed him back up to that very top level. And he's really giving it back. That touch, I don't think you'll touch another ball. <laughs> this is really, Christian has to really watch this line now with him. Beautifully ridden. And you can see from the camera angle, you can really see how Talibé can just make his little strides. He, he shuffles himself together and organizes his feet in front of the jumps. He's really quite a genius, this horse. So I expect Christian will go up on the six and the five through this line with him. Come on, Talibé. Come on, Talibé. Absolutely brilliant. Yet another superb round from this championship of horses. The winners from the 2011 London FEI World Cup final go clear once again here in Gothenburg. Christian Almond, Talibé Z go clear. Finish on the 11 penalties. Sorry, on the eight penalties picked up earlier on in the week.
And that's a fantastic double clear round for Christian and Talibay. And I have to say, with a small tear in our eyes, we have to look back and think, what would have been if he'd ridden Talibay day one? He won on Saturday, he jumped double clear here today. It's fantastic. Yes, his faults coming in on Friday on colour red. But great performances since then. And this is another man. Oh, we've just gone back out to the collecting ring. Here he is for Ireland. Dennis Lynch with All Star on eight, but clear throughout the week. Yeah, he's jumped four clear rounds here. It's been an outstanding performance from this combination. When asked in a press conference the other day if the riders were to uh, say their horses were cars, it was a strange question. Dennis said he'd be riding, riding a Land Rover. And uh, yeah, a Land Rover's not as fast as a Ferrari, and it's really only the speed that's been between him and mm -hmm. success. Very far off the ox are coming in. Oh, and he backed up to jump that super. Of course, if he jumps clear, he will go equal with Christian. And Dennis will probably go up on five. We will see if he goes on five and four, if he takes the five. Just setting himself up on the angle so that he can hold a little in the five. He doesn't want to get in too flat. And he goes for the four. Come on. Oh. Oh. <laughs> that was absolutely <laughs> outstanding. I mean... I mean, we do have to say, this horse jumped clear every single round. And the only horse to do so here in Gothenburg exactly. in this competition. Dennis Lynch goes clear, stays on the eight penalties, but one cannot say enough about the consistency of this all-star, this 13-year-old stallion hasn't touched a pole or hasn't knocked a fence down this weekend absolutely brilliant performance and dennis was faster than christian so unless they're coming into a situation for for a winning tie they will be placed on their times in this round so dennis is actually ahead of christian at this point for this particular comp individual competition yeah. and that caption confirms that on the screens just a quick very quick comment well just introduce marco now on six penalties, Marco Kucha and the 10 year old by Chaka Blue Chakarina. I just want to just mention Dennis to you because you've been talking about his problems with his back. He jumped the last and put his hand on his back. You could see he was obviously uncomfortable. Yeah, but he's probably been uncomfortable all weekend. Yeah. But uh, the, adre the adrenaline, you know, the, as he jumped that last jump, it's, all o it's over. And then you start to feel your Ooh. problems. <laughs> and this mare jumping very good, very light mistake. A very silly mistake, actually, to begin with. Oh, well, that was certainly a real mistake. This is what happens in the, in the final round. Santi has set a proper second round here today. And um, this horse has never jumped a championship before. and She's been really jumping a blinder all weekend. And you can just see, at, at this point, there are these small mistakes coming. It's, it's a matter of concentration. It's not because she can't do it, but it's concentration. Oh, Marco, a little deep there. Oh, the mare really stretching, really showing this scope. Well, disappointingly, three down, 12 to add. So finishes on 18 penalties. Marco Kutcher for Germany and the 10 year old Chakarina moves down from sixth place to 12th. Now to the top five. It certainly played. It's part, that combination, Jess. Absolutely. Every part of it's come down on various yeah, occasions. But it's a very, very difficult. It's just plain red poles. There's, there's nothing to make the horses back off. It's a very difficult bending turn and a difficult distance to come in. There's, there's so many decisions and so many things for the riders and horses to do. And this being the final round, it's really difficult for them to be um, feeling, feeling like coping with, with this exercise. 
Now, Marcus Enning for Germany. He dropped three places down to fifth in the first round this afternoon. He's won three finals. He'd love a fourth. Marcus Enning for Germany. Coronado on six penalties. Just see him already jumping number one at the angle, taking the six strides, taking one stride less than the others up to new number two. He's very conscious of his time in this round. He knows he's not going to win it, but he wants to ride for a good placing. And if he could jump a, f a fast clear round here, that will help to bring him up the leaderboard perhaps a little bit. Taking a big risk on the six into the combination. Jumps it beautifully. Marcus really uses the scope of this horse. Angling for the five, but going out for the six. 68 seconds, the time allowed. Very good round. Very Absolutely, good round. perfectly judged round by Marcus Enning for Germany and Coronado. They complete on their six penalties. They go clear in a very well judged round indeed. Beautiful pictures there, the balance between the horse and rider. And of, Masterful. And of course, Marcus puts himself now in a position. If any of the next three have a mistake, he moves up. <laughs> he said it was very nice. Four, four to go. One penalty less than Marcus Henning at the moment. Penelope Leprevo for France on five with Vagabond de la Pomme. Winner of the first of the three competitions back on Friday. That seems like a long time ago now, Jess. Yeah, but the suspense is here unbelievable now because Penelope, Harry and Daniel, they know that if they have one fence down, they drop behind Marcus. So the suspense is really, really on for these riders. They have to jump clear. They have to have a clean sheet. And it's all over for Penelope. Normally a horse that you would expect to get up there easily on the four, just didn't stretch for the back bar of that oxer. She will drop right down now with this fence down. Well, after such a great start at, on Friday, it's been a bit of a disappointing weekend, or in fact, a hell of a disappointing weekend for the leading lady rider in the global rankings, Penelope Leprevo, Vagabond de la Pomme. They end on nine penalties, having added that four just in this round. It just shows you how close this is. She started off in the lead after the first day, made a small mistake on her ride to the last jump. And now today you can see this really well. She drives him forwards, but he just stretches. He doesn't go up, he just stretches. And really the French hopes absolutely crashed this weekend. So Marcus Enning gets closer to the podium and Steve Gerda knows, but I'm sure it won't, uh, won't make him feel any better. He can have a fence down and stay on the podium, but I don't think he wants to just stay on the podium. No, he wants to be on the higher step, that's for sure. Harry Smelders. And there is Marcus Enning. With Rob Aaron's Dutch chef to keep. Harry Smelders for the Netherlands, riding Emerald. Moved up a place after that brilliant clear earlier this afternoon into second equal spot. I can hardly bear the suspense at this stage. <laughs> it's so close now. 
And these guys have such a tall order ahead of them. They cannot touch a pole. They've got to jump clean if they want to keep any chance of being up the order. This is difficult. Come on. Emerald jumping, fantastic. <sighs> oh, what a piece of riding from Harry. Carrying him through that triple combination. So he's got to really get this last line light. He's got to be there for Emerald coming out of that combination. Leg, Harry. He's yes! there. <laughs> uh, an absolutely delighted crowd here. Mark Descending, a little bit despondent because he knows the Harry Smolders is kept in front of him, so Harry Smolders and Emerald, they go clear and stay in their second equal place at the moment on that three penalties. Pressure now on Daniel Dusa and Steve Gerda, the last two in the arena. Absolutely superb, Jess. But not only does Harry know that he is going to be for the first time on the podium, he's been so many times fourth, he knows he's first time on the podium, but he also knows he's really put it up to Daniel and to Steve. He's really, really put the pressure on now. This is just absolutely unreal. Daniel and Emerald jumped his socks up, living up to his name. He's had a big name all his life, and he's lived up to that name today. Down to the last two in the 2016 Longin FEI World Cup jumping final. Winners from 2014. Daniel Deusser for Germany. Cornet de Mont. Three penalties coming in here, level with Harry Smolders. I correct myself from earlier, Cornet de Moore, owned by Stefan Conter of the Stefex Stables, and he has kept this horse for Daniel. Daniel, of course, is number one stable jockey, and what for a number one stable jockey? This is really the moment they've got to get it right. <laughs> Come on. If he jumps clear, we could be coming to a jump off situation. And leg. Come on, come on, come on. Yes, yes! <laughs> well, we have just seen two of the most magnificent rounds of jumping here in Gothenburg. Daniel Dusser stays on the three, level with Harry Smolders. Those two could not have done any more to their position. They stay on three penalties. Daniel Dosa, Cornet de Moore. There is Stefan Conter with Daniel. Just beautiful jumping. The first time I saw this horse, he was seven years old, and he jumped every jump perfect, and he's doing it now at the top level of the sport. And what what combinations, Harry and Emerald and Daniel and Cornet de Moore. These are really, really top class combinations. And that shows you where we are at the moment because the man on the screens, the defending champion, Steve Gerdat for Switzerland, a Corbinian. He has to go clear to win. Should he not, should he have one down, we have a jump off between the Dutchman and the German. And if he does go clear, Harry will be second and Daniel will be third because of their times. But what a pressure is on this man's shoulders now.
It's not the first time he's had this pressure, but these two guys, they jumped clear and he knows absolutely no room for error. They jumped a blinder in the first round. Thomas Fuchs said between the rounds, we just have to keep cool now. Just 10 years old, Corbinian. And everybody's saying Steve riding a blinder this weekend. This is what it's all about, this combination. Clear through it. This is the moment where the rider starts to say, I'm clear, just keep coming. But he's got to keep focused, just jump for jump, keep focused. Just has to keep focused up through this line. Jump it on the six strides and jump it. Still clear, one to go. Yes, here the we defending go. defending champion. Yes. He's done it. <laughs> Steve Gernat retains his title from Las Vegas. And the shaking of the head to the 11,000 people here in Gothenburg rise to their feet as the reigning Olympic champion, the defending champion from the London FBI World Cup final 12 months ago, repeats his performance here in Gothenburg. What an incredible last three rounds of jumping we've just seen, Jess. This is just the most exciting sport that I think we've seen in a long time. And really a standing ovation for Stephen Cabinian, and rightly so, rightly so. This has been yet again another production from Gerda Fuchs, what they have done this weekend. They have built up for this event built Steve up, built Corbinian up, and they have proved yet again that when it comes to a championship, they are such a team to be reckoned with. Outstanding. Back to back, Longin FBI World Cup Finals, Steve Gerdat. What an incredible weekend for this 10-year-old gelding by Krona Oblensky, Corbinian. And everybody waiting for Steve as he comes out. There's Renata Fuchs. The whole team is there to support him. And of course, this is a very, very special moment here because nobody really expected Steve and Corbinian to come out as the winners. For sure it's a top jockey, for sure it's a top horse, but if they were really ready to come and jump these three days and come the winners, and of course all the other riders running out now to Steve to congr congratulate him, because everybody realizes that what he and Corbinian have done this weekend is very special. And uh, his face says it all. Steve is a very quiet guy. He keeps himself to himself. And you can just see all that effort is just coming out now. And it's wonderful to see. Andy Kistler, unbelievably successful as Swiss chef to keep. He's been having a great run and the vet. They are so, so, so happy. And that is confirmation of the final result here in Gothenburg. Steve Gerdat retains his title as Longin FBI World Cup champion on Corbinian. Harry Smolders in second place on Emerald. Daniel Dusa, winners from 2014 with Cornet de Moore in fourth place. Marcus Enning edged out of that bid to win a fourth title on Coronado. Dennis Lynch, there needs to be a prize for that man because he's not knocked the fence down since Thursday. Absolutely clean sweep over all five rounds of jumping with All-Star. Christian Alman, what an incredible performance from him with Tally Bet Z. Pulled himself up from 20 from 25th place into sixth place thanks to his long-term partner and former winner of this competition tally bet said the world number one c1 de Lestra, he had a disappointing couple of rounds ended up in ninth place and that's down to the last 20 young jolos Jos 
Peter Lutz, and great to see Poland in there, in the Absolutely. top 20 with Jarosz Kaczynski. And two fairy tale results in the top 10. Callum Solom with her VDL wizard in seventh place. She wasn't expecting that when she came over on this expedition. And Chris Chug with the outstanding Crystalline, the eight-year-old mare who went in there and jumped her socks off all weekend. What an amazing competition. And the excitement, the party here in the stadium continues. Nobody is getting off their seat. They're all going to stay for the prize giving. They want to pay respect to these amazing horses and riders who have given us such super, super sport over the Easter weekend here in Gothenburg. Jess, let's reflect on the engineering of this sport, in other words, the course designing. Let's reflect on Santiago Varela. He, he's had a hell of a job to do. He has to start with a speed class, which everybody can, goes into on Friday. Then we have the, the table A on Saturday. Now we're here on Monday. Just give us your pricey of the thoughts of, of how Santi has done with the courses this weekend. Well, I think I would not be alone when I would say that he's done an outstanding job. Not only has he presented us with beautiful hindrance uh, material, the jumps have been very pretty, and he's used a lot of a lot of different different ideas. He has made te technically uh, difficult courses, but not impossible. They were really uh, possible for big stride, small stride. The riders could make a choice. He was careful over the first few days not to overbuild so as he wouldn't take too much out of the horses coming in to the third day. And he was brave on day three. He built a difficult track round one and then he set up a, a blinder for, for the finale. He really felt that these horses and riders were jumping, that they were fresh, that they were in great form. And he said, I really need to put in a final track so that we get a true, true champion. Um, out of this competition and he really did do this and you can see that he's done a very good job Steve was for in fourth place twice and winning winning here today and uh, when you look Harry was 11th and third and double clear today and Daniel Doyce was third and 12th and double clear today so the results actually showing through the weekend that consistency had paid off and it was consistency which won the competition for Steve Gerard this weekend We've got Daniel Dusser, Cornette de Moore. A replay of their amazing round. Yeah, really fantastic camera work this weekend. It's really been, we've been able to see exactly when things went wrong, exactly what was, what was the reason. And uh, super, super pictures of these great partnerships. And real credit to Steve Gerda's mental attitude this weekend. He really stayed cool, and he certainly didn't gallop through the last jump today. He balanced for it, and it was absolutely fantastic. And lovely to see the emotion on a rider when they know they've achieved something out of the ordinary, something very, very special that you dream of. This is what Steve has achieved today. That's what everybody, when they go out in the morning to work their horses, they're having these dreams. What an excellent weekend of sport that the crowds here in Gothenburg have been treated to. The show that started last Thursday afternoon culminates with this wonderful competition here tonight. The 14th time that the Longin FBI World Cup final has been here in the Scandinavium, in Gothenburg, and the crowds here who absolutely love it and understand the sport and get right behind. They're very quick to pick up their heroes. I mean, they, I was thinking about actually the eight, just apart from the great riders, they, they, the appreciation shown with, with the eight-year-old mayor for Chris Chug, this crowd here. They really did take them to their hearts. Yeah, absolutely, and, and they took Chris Chug to, to their hearts as well. You know, these people, uh, it's horsey people, it's fans of the sport. They know what's going on. 
and, and also Olivier Philippard riding for Hennes and Maritz. They kind of adopted him as the weekend went on. <laughs> well, he's, a good, he's a good looking he's, young chap. <laughs> well, well yeah, there's a lot of young girls in here. <laughs> um, but uh, no, really, the, it's, but that's what I've said to you before. Riding in this arena is a special feeling. And certainly, Steve, he's got a lot of championship titles under his belt now. But I would imagine in years to come, he will mention the weekend that he won the Longines FEI World Cup final in Gothenburg and what that was like to be carried out of the arena by this crowd. And they are very special. And of course, his work's not over this year yet. He's got to defend another title in yep. a few months' time. Absolutely, and for that, he's really saving Nino. He's doing basically with Nino what he did with Corbinian, just playing around, gradually building him up. Nino, Nino has done a lot now, and he has to really protect him at this stage. Um, he did it in Geneva, a beautiful win in Geneva, and you know he's just been playing about with him now, and he'll do a few Nations Cups and uh, set up for, for the Olympics. And uh, it's great to be in this position as a rider that you can do this. Not every rider has the owners that support them um, or the ranking in the world ranking list that they can pitch, pick which shows they ride at. Uh, but in saying that, Steve has, has got himself into this position. Switzerland is a small country, but the owners in Switzerland are great supporters of their riders. And uh, that's why somebody like Steve, with the experience of Thomas Fuchs, uh, can prepare himself for this championship. And we have to say he's got the nerves to do it as well. Well, the prize giving for the 2016 final here at the Longin FEI World Cup, just about to commence. And I think we should mention Harry Smolders. This is the first time that Harry Smolders has been on the podium. He's been working this for a long time. He's been many times number four. And Emerald has proved himself this weekend that he is really a candidate for that amazing uh, Dutch team. And uh, it's good for them to have a fresh combination to come in there because they have been the dominating team at the championships now and to have Harry and, and Emerald coming into that team is really a bonus for them. That's the cup that they dream about. There were wonderful stories from Las Vegas 12 months ago when Steve Gerdat won the title there. You know, Jess, in Las Vegas, 15 members of Steve's family flew over to Las Vegas from Europe to just to go to watch him there and he won the title there. I've no idea how many of them are here tonight in Gothenburg, but there's about, or this afternoon I should say, but there's bound to be a few. But it's so important to have your people that you are comfortable with. The people that you don't have to put a face on for, that you can just be yourself. Because when you come to a championship like this, you need to be egoistic with your time. You need to be really in, in your tunnel, concentrating on yourself and your horse. But you do also need to relax, and that's why you need those people around you who you can just let go and be yourself. And if you talk, you talk, and if you don't talk, nobody minds. We're looking at the top eight. We've seen Penelope Leprevo with Vagabond de la Pomme, winners from the first night. We've seen a wonderful Callum Solon with a great BDL wizard. We're just looking now at Christian Alman and the amazing Tally Bed Z. In fifth place, Dennis Lynch with All Star, the only horse to have consistently jumped clear. Just not quick enough, but he's jumped clear all through the World Cup weekend. Yeah, it's a super, super result for Dennis and uh, a real boost for him, having just missed the individual qualification for the Olympics. But he's really marked his card now for the coming months. In fourth place. The man who stood on top of the podium no less than three times previously at the finals, Marcus Edding for Germany with Coronado. I think Marcus is very disappointed. Coronado was jumping very good, small mistakes, and uh, he knows himself at a championship like that, that there is, if you want to win, there's just no room for error. But Coronado showing himself in great form for the team this year.
The atmosphere here in Scandinavia is absolutely amazing. Think, Everybody is standing. I think the roof is going to come off in a minute when I when this final three come in now. I, I could do with finding that baby that had the headphones on. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody just standing and clapping and waiting for them. Of course, the riders outside. It's a sea of people, uh, supporters, the other riders, a great sea of people that they have to get through. Everybody congratulating them because those three were all winners today. They really jumped for this this weekend. We have, we have a, a, a golden winner, we have a silver and we have a bronze, but those three were all winners today. And the top three. Daniel Dusa with his 2014 winner in third place today in Gothenburg. Daniel Dusa, Cornet de Moor. And Harry Smolders matched the penalty score with Daniel Dusa, but he was a little quicker on that final round. So second place on the podium, Harry Smolders for the Netherlands and Emerald NOP. Back-to-back -back winners of a Longines FEI World Cup jumping final, the 2016 champion, Steve Gerdat for Switzerland with Corbinian. And just standing here now, um, it's really, your hair just stands on end, you get goose pimples, it's such an amazing feeling. And I'm just looking down to the rider stand, and there I can see Thomas Fuchs, just taking a seat to sit down and watch Steve in the prize giving. And this man has played a very large part in Steve Gerda's success over the years. Steve Gerda ended on zero penalties. Please ask our top three riders if you guys could please dismount your horses. And of course, as you said before, two of the most prominent sires represented here in the prize giving with Cornet Obolinski and Diamant Semeli. What a moment now for Steve. The champion of Lille in 2014. Another fantastic result. Daniel Doysa on the moment in third position. The German Cornet D'Amour. Daniel and his Cornet D'Amour yet again. Such a fantastic, consistent weekend. One silly mistake on Saturday. Daniel would not say that it was Cornet's fault. He took it completely on his cap. Well, what great rounds they jumped here today. The splits, the men in third and second place. It is their tie on the same score three. I think fair to say this man has come of age this afternoon. I'm sure his best career results. Please welcome in second the runner-up for the Netherlands, Harry Smulders. Harry Smulders steps up onto the podium in a championship for the first time in his career. And how does this man deserve it? He has been getting better and better and better over the last years. He has produced this horse from young years on. Axel Verloy and his family, they've kept this horse for Harry. They've waited, they've produced him, and he's, he's really come up to the level now this year. What a great, what a great moment for these two. the world title he won in Las Vegas. He's done everything in the sport in addition to the London Olympic title in 2012. He had to be at his dazzling best to beat the two men for the second and third. Please give a huge reception, a new Roger FEI 
World Cup champion in Gothenburg, Steve Gerdas, the Switzerland of the Yet again, Longines. FBI World Cup champion Steve Gerda, but this year with Corbinian. And looking on the kiss and cry, I see team chef to keep Andy Kistler together with Steve's father, French chef to keep Philip Gerda. And they're all very close to tears. It's, of course, very, very emotional. There is Stefan Conter, owner of Carnet d'Amour. Back-to-back -back victories for the Olympic champion. What a moment. And how these, how these three riders and three horses deserve this standing ovation that they're getting. National Anthem of Switzerland. I think that smile says it all. Yeah, and Steve, Steve, everybody who knows Steve know that he's he's uh, quite an introverted um, man, and um, you really see in moments like that he's just he's just working towards his goal, and he's a happy man when he achieves his goal, and that we could see today. He's put months of work into this, he achieved his goal, and I think the the outburst of emotion that he showed when he went through the finish shows just his passion for what he does with his horses. And really, we're seeing the riders getting their prizes, but the scenes that are going on a little bit behind, down on the Kiss and Cry area with, with the Swiss, with the Belgians, with the Germans, there is great emotion for all these families and supporters who were involved with these final three. And through that, you can really see what a team effort it is to get these riders and horses up to this level and to get a result like this. This is a, this is a huge result. This is not just something that happens with very little. Sabrina Benez, FBI Secretary General, made the presentations to the riders. Now the Longines Vice President, Head of International Marketing, Juan Carlos Capelli makes his presentation of the Longines timepieces to each of the three podium finishers. Thank you to Longines. Great timepieces for the top three in their Longines World Cup final. Yet again, another beautiful Longines watch for Steve to add to his collection of beautiful Longines watches. <laughs> But I'm, I'm fascinated just watching, watching everybody outside here. The emotion, the pictures that are on outside the arena is just so wonderful and really tells a story of, there's a few people there who've not had such a good day and there's some happy followers. Per Ludvis there, president of the organizing committee, congratulating Daniel Lusa, Harris Molders, and the winner, Steve Gerdad. And in the background, the theme tune from Chariots of Fire <laughs> playing. It's so emotional, it's just unbelievable. What a great picture, look at that.
Gothenburg, Sweden hosted the 38th edition of the Longin FEI World Cup Jumping Finals. Once again, the Scandinavian, Sweden's premier indoor sporting venue and arguably the home of the FEI World Cup holds the finals for the 14th time, having held inaugural running in 1979. Over the past year, over 800 riders across every continent have competed via 15 regional leagues for a place here in Gothenburg. And 36 combinations representing 17 nations came forward to compete for this prestigious title of the Longin FEI World Cup Jumping Champion. It came down to the last round of final three. Three-time champion, Marcus Enning was on six penalties. Penelope Leprevo on five, Harry Smolders on three, Daniel Dusa on three. And the defending champion, Steve Gerdat, was in pole position on zero. <laughs> Enning was clear up over the Spanish court designer Santiago Varelli track, throwing the pressure forward. Penelope Leprevo, who led after the first day, had one down, dropping her out of contention. Harry Smolders and the big stallion Emerald came home clear. A podium finish, guaranteed. Former champion Daniel Dusa with Cornet de Moore soaked up the pressure, jumping clear to tie with Smolders. Could there be a jumper? Steve Gerdat knew what he needed to do. He had to go clear to retain the title, and he did. Gerdat and Corbinian jumped an amazing round, clear and inside the time to take the title for the second time. That wraps up an amazing weekend at Top Sport here in Gothenburg. Steve Gerdat is the 2016 Longin FEI World Cup jumping champion. It's time for, I'm sure, an incredible lap of honor. Our thanks to the presenting party, Sabrina Ibanez, the FEI Secretary General, thank you very much. To Mr. Capelli, the Vice President of Longin and Head of International Marketing, and our thanks to Pat Podcris of the Organising Committee here in Gothenburg. Thank you very, very much. You can really see Steve's emotion. He made beautiful, spoke beautifully to the crowds here in Gothenburg and thanked them for their passion for the sport. As one very happy couple, they've got some flowers for their house tonight. And very special flowers they Absolutely. were there too. Absolutely. And the camera not on the three grooms walking out of the ring. And those are three of the most dedicated grooms on the circuit. Steve Gerdat. Back to back, Longin FEI World Cup champion. And in a few weeks time, he will be defending his Olympic win as well. What a year for the Swiss rider. Massive scenes here in the Scandinavian. All the crowd have still they've stayed. Uh, they've stayed for this wonderful celebration. And uh, they won't let him out. <laughs> Poor <laughs> Corbinian, he's been a show jumper for three days and now he has to be a racehorse. <laughs> 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 Every single one of these people in the stadium, they go home tonight with a little bit of that feeling that Steve Gerda has. They're all on a high going home from this great sporting event. You can feel the energy in here. It's, it's, it's just incredible. But that's what makes Gothenburg so special. And there he goes. Next job, Rio. Absolutely. But I think there'll be some others that are going to make it difficult for him. <laughs> 
wonderful sporting afternoon. Gothenburg, Sweden, hosted the 38th edition of the Longines FEI World Cup Jumping Finals. Once again, the Scandinavian, Sweden's premier indoor sporting venue, and arguably the home of the FEI World Cup, holds the finals for the 14th time, having held the inaugural running in 1979. Over the past year, over 800 riders across every continent have competed via 15 regional leagues for a place here in Gothenburg. And 36 combinations representing 17 nations came forward to compete for the prestigious title of the Longin FEI World Cup Jumping Champion. It came down to the last round of final three. Three-time champion Marcus Enning was on six penalties. Penlop Leprevo on five. Harry Smolders on three, and Daniel Dusa on three. And the defending champion, Steve Gerdat, was in pole position on zero. Earning was clear over Spanish course designer Santiago Varela's track, throwing the pressure forward. Penlop Leprevo, who led after the first day, had one down, dropping her out of contention. Harry Smolders and the big stallion Emerald came home clear, a podium finish guaranteed. Former champion Daniel Dusa with Cornet de Moore soaked up the pressure, jumping clear to tie with Smolders. Could there be a jump off? Steve Gerjat knew what he needed to do. He had to go clear to retain the title. And he did. Gerdat and Corbinian jumped an amazing round, clear and inside the time, to take the title for the second time. That wraps up an amazing weekend of top sport here in Gothenburg. Steve Gerdat is the 2016 Longines FEI World Cup jumping champion. Well, the coverage on FEI TV has been an absolute pleasure, and not least of all because, Jess, you've joined us this weekend. You've been doing several of the qualifying rounds, of course. Thank you very much indeed for your expertise. It's, Phil, it's been absolute, absolutely amazing. It's been a pleasure to be part of this amazing event, this amazing sport this weekend. It's uh, been really, really, really a special moment, and we're going to have a lot of memories for the time to come. Well, we'll leave our viewers with images of Steve and Daniel's rounds. So from us in Gothenburg, it's time to go to the airport now to get out of here and wait for the next group of competitions to come on FEI TV. So thank you very much indeed for joining us. So from me, Phil Gazala, it's a huge thank you and good night from Gothenburg. And also from me, Jessica Curtin, thank you all for watching and I hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Bye-bye. Thank Bye. you.